a referendum designed to give Australia's First Nations people a bigger say in their own affairs is expected to be given the go-ahead by the federal parliament in Canberra next month. But the outcome of the national vote, which will likely be held towards the end of the year, is far from clear. Roger Maynard reports from Canberra on an issue which is dividing the nation. On the face of it, it's a simple and seemingly reasonable question. Do you agree that the Constitution should recognise the First Peoples of Australia by establishing an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to Parliament? This is a, an enormous issue for Australia. Uh, if, it, uh, if the referendum is passed, uh, it will make a huge change. It'll be a constitutional change, very rare in Australia, and it will have a big impact on government and parliament. Critics fear a yes vote would give Indigenous Australians an opportunity to intervene and influence decisions of executive government in virtually every department. They argue it would effectively enable Aborigines to challenge policy decisions through the courts and make the country virtually ungovernable. It's a view not shared by all, especially those who've been fighting for the rights of First Nations people for years and who addressed a recent parliamentary committee on the subject. The provision is not going to create a separate democracy. You are the democracy. Our Senate and House of Representatives is our democracy. What the voice does is improve it. It's true that many First Nations people live in third world conditions. The child mortality rate is much higher. Many Aboriginals complain of racism. A disproportionate number end up unemployed or behind bars. And it's because of perceived inequality that they strive for change, shouting their message at rallies up and down the country. Away from the front line of Aboriginal activism, white Australia, while sympathetic to the First Nations cause, remains proud of the country's achievement since the British arrived more than two centuries ago. It's a record celebrated every year with a barbecue breakfast on Australia Day, a tradition which might be lost if Aboriginal supporters get their way and change the name to Invasion Day. We've had 200 years plus years of uh, suppressing uh, First Nations people and we need to do a lot more to work with them uh, to yeah, incorporate them properly. It is uh, Invasion Day. Uh, I think things need to change. Even so, the no vote is gaining ground, with many people believing the referendum has not been fully explained or the legal and financial ramifications explored. I think that this voice is uh, wrong in principle and I think it's potentially quite dangerous in practice. I think it's wrong to divide our country on the basis of ancestry. I think it's a mistake to give uh, about 4% of the population uh, more of a say over how our government and our parliament works than uh, everyone else. But others disagree, suggesting the voice will end centuries of entrenched disadvantage. I'm hopeful that there will be a positive outcome, that Australians will see this for the generous offer that it is from First Nations people to say, let's walk hand in hand in, into the future. Allow us to have our say on laws and policies that affect us. A lot is riding on the result of this referendum. If the government manages to win a yes vote, then many people will herald it as a victory for Australia's often neglected First Nations people. But a no vote could seriously damage Australia's image on the world stage. There is that danger that once again will be seen as the white trash of Asia who have voted against and racially against uh, a minority of Indigenous Australians. There is still a long way to go in this fierce national debate, but one way or the other, the issue is likely to be decided by the end of the year. Roger Maynard, CNA, Canberra.